thank you for the introduction. If you allow me to share, please. Okay, I, I would like first to, to thank uh, Novartis for inviting me, and I would like also to thank the organizer. My talk is titled Non-Governmental Organizations and Healthcare Services. A non-governmental non organization, by definition, is a non-profit group that functions independently from any government. NGOs, sometimes called the civil societies, are organized on community, national and international levels to serve a social or political goals such as humanitarian causes or the environment. And definitely I am concerned today to talk about the health-related NGOs. The benefits for, uh, of NGOs for different stakeholders is, are very uh, clear. For example, for the patient access to innovation, many treatment options which may not be covered by the patient the insurance. Again, for the provider, improved disease management and reduction of uncertainty. For the payer, again, management of uncertainty and the avoidance of financial risk in patients who do not benefit from the treatment. And definitely for, for the pharmaceutical companies, innovation is rewarded and confidentiality. But how NGOs got the strength in the health system? What they add, they can experiment more freely with innovative approach and if necessary to, do, to take the risk. But definitely I do not mean that uh, there is lack of uh, regulations in the uh, clinical research within the NGOs because as we know the uh, clinical research is governed by a very strict regulations which covers the, all the health systems, including the NGOs. But they are flexible in adapting local situations and responding to the local needs. And therefore, they are able to develop integrated projects as well as sectoral ones. What else can NGOs add to strengthen the health system? They can render uh, what is called micro-assistance to very poor people as they can identify those who are most in need and they tailor assistance to their needs. They are more in contact with these poor people and they have the ability to communicate at all levels. They have communications from the neighborhood up to the top levels of, govern of uh, government Again, uh, close relation to the uh, civil society, to the celebrities, and so on. Um, perhaps one of the most obstacles for improvement of the governmental hospitals is the uh, issue of uh, salaries and the uh, upper limit of salaries and so on. For NGOs, they are able to recruit both experts and the highly motivated staff with fewer restrictions than the government and this allows for more uh, impact on the health system within the NGOs. For the society, they uh, provide important local action. For example, they support recognizing and responding to the reality of the local people. They provide tailored health care services, even if a small fraction of people, and that, that are not sufficient in the total country population, again, Policies can be implemented in, on what is called hands-on fashion, especially due to the smaller number of beneficiaries compared to the government-managed facilities. And some, some may argue this may be a, a weak point, not, not a, a point of strength. For example, they may assume that a small number of hospitals gain a large amount of donations while they are servicing a small amount, relatively small amounts of patients. However, if you have a good example or a model of success, it can be generalized to the governmental hospitals. And our role is not to, to draw the uh, models of success to the uh, obstacles of the uh, larger one. They improve the standard of life through programs which are usually community-based. So they uh, research, develop, and work on several projects which can help people change their lives. They are able to penetrate all corners of the community to find out what kind of problems people face and they can do and what they can do to make things better. 
So there's many pillars for helping the society. For example, they increase the standard of life by uh, teaching the people in the respective communities how to lead a better life. They provide awareness campaigns about prevalent disease in the societies that lack basic knowledge about such diseases through media, through celebrities, through whatsoever. And these teachings have been seen to improve the quality of their lives at different levels, and we have many models of awareness campaigns which represent a good example for uh, other uh, health care facilities. Perhaps one of the most important benefits of NGOs is ensuring equity. Because you widen the range of accessibility to health care services reaching the communities that may not be accessible to the government in any country, by the way. Uh, as partial health insurance is utilized in various cases, so some patients will uh, exhaust their coverage, their insurance coverage, and they will be without any support for their health needs. So the NGOs provide free of charge health care services to those who cannot afford it. So they are complementary to the governmental uh, facilities. What is the value of this? The value of this is that equity increases the uh, patriotism and the loyalty to the community. So better health care accessibility and improved safety and efficacy lead to better quality of life, satisfaction among the citizens, and this naturally will be reflected on adequate health care services, which, which are not only patriot, patriotic and loyal to the country and the community, but are also will allow people to be more productive, innovative in giving back to their community. Okay, today we have many examples for successful medical image use in Egypt. These are just some of these societies. I am concerned to talk about uh, my NGO, which is the Haga. And definitely the ideal all of us dream about is to have a single authority which governs all the NGOs in order to uh, allow for, for better allocation of resources instead of, have, <clears throat> instead of having uh, for example, two hospitals in certain place, why not to distribute these hospitals and allow for better distribution, better allocation of the donations, or uh, a more uh, widened overview of the health system. However, I will now talk about some uh, data about Bahia. Bahia stands for the uh, Mrs. Bahia Wahdi, who is the wife of engineer Ahmed Uthman. She was diagnosed with breast cancer and traveled to be treated abroad. And then she decided to help women who fight both disease and the poverty to overcome it and be cured. It was initially established in the year 2015 and it consisted initially of six floors and divided with an initial value of around 150 million pounds. Definitely uh, it is in the uh, philosophy of treatment at the Haya Foundation includes many pillars. For example, early detection, the most important one, bearing in mind that early detection of breast cancer, the Haya is concerned, by the way, with breast cancer for the uh, majority of, uh, of cases in the free section. Because early detection of breast cancer carries a big role in the rise of cure rate and, and early detection or screening <laughs> of uh, breast cancer, by which I mean detection of the disease uh, before being clinically uh, detectable or symptomatic, it allows for a cure rate which may reach up to 98% in certain in some cases. Again, psychological support, keeping with uh, healthy physically and psychologically priority. Uh, perhaps the uh, psychological support program in Bahia is one of the uh, very uh, one of the initial pioneers in this field, and this team of psychological support is now providing uh, activities like uh, workshops, traps, sessions both in Bahia and both in other facilities because it is uh, a success story. Again, awareness based on the foundation concern for the need 
to raise awareness about early detection of breast cancer. The HEA organizes awareness seminars with the aim of governing, covering all governments. They go to every, almost every government in Asia, and again to uh, some companies and, and so on. And the awareness is not only for early detection now, but some uh, media coverage for the new treatments, the uh, modalities of diagnosis, and the new innovations in breast and in oncology generally. I will go through some numbers. Monthly, for example, uh, there is around 3,000 early detections, around uh, the same number for <clears throat> chemotherapy sessions per month, 1,000 radiotherapy sessions monthly, with the cumulative achievements of around 143, more than 143,000 patients. Again, more approaching, we are approaching more than 47, or around 50,000 chemotherapy sessions. The number of, su of surgeries is around 7,700 and more. The number of radiotherapy sessions is more than 135. Bahia uh, is, is, is a comprehensive breast cancer service. It includes all the uh, needs of breast cancer patients, for example, radiotherapy department, oncology department, surgical department, uh, diagnostic radiology, uh, pathology, lab, clinical pharmacy, uh, and so on. In the year 2017, Bahia developed what is called the Bahia Academy for Training, and since then, around more than 650 students and the graduates from different uh, faculties were trained. And the training department offers a medical training and scientific support after graduation for doctors from outside and inside Egypt in all aspects of, of breast cancer treatment, surgery, medical oncology, radiotherapy, radiology, clinical pharmacy, lab, and, and so on. And by the way, many of these programs are accredited by the international facilities like the American Council of Accreditation. One of the most important aims of Bahia Foundation is uh, research in the field of oncology, and they are focusing in, uh, on medical research being one of the main reasons for breast cancer uh, treatment improvement. Bahia Research Center was established in the year 2017, and since then, more than 100 medical research has been published by the, by the uh, facility. It organizes also some specialized, specialized workshops and courses uh, concerned with uh, research. And many clinical trials, uh, uh, by the way, are running. And these clinical trials may be pharmaceutical based, many international clinical trials, and some uh, clinical trials in, co in uh, collaboration with, for example, the National Research Center and, and so on, and some other academic institutes in Egypt. Again, some uh, research is concerned with some uh, masters and uh, medical doctorate degrees in different Egyptian universities, and even the undergraduate student projects in different universities. And finally, Bahia is now building uh, her dream, which is uh, Bahia Zaid, which will be uh, one of the most important comprehensive uh, breast cancer hospitals, not, in, not only in Egypt, but in the Middle East, it will include inpatient and outpatient uh, and the research services from all aspects. And with this, I thank you for your attention. Thank you.